Full disclosure, I think I'm the last person that you should come to for university prep advice because literally, um, three days before the census date, and if you don't know what the census date is, it's basically the day where everything shuts off, where everything's kind of like, no, you're not going to get into a new class, no, everything's booked out. So three days before the census date, I've realized that one of my units on the Melbourne University website decided to boot me out of the tutorial because it was allegedly full. Even online classes were full, so I was sitting in front of my screen freaking out. And I was thinking like, how in the world am I gonna, gonna get into this tutorial, get into this unit? Last minute, literally two days ago, I've uh, booted myself out of um, art history. So instead of art history, and that right now I'm studying the philosophy of language, which is something that I've thought about studying for the longest time, but I ran myself in a full circle and finally decided to drop out of art history and just study the philosophy of language, and guess what? Wittgenstein's philosophical investigation, which I've talked about on one of my uh, during one of my video essays on why you shouldn't look up every word when you try to read in another language, was listed as one of the course readings. So I thought to myself, I've already read, you know, I've already read philosophical investigations. Where is that bastard? I've actually got myself the the edition where it's like full on, you know, half German, half in German, half in English, and it is tabbed with sticky tapes, sticky tapes, tapped with plastic flags. And um, yeah, I don't really claim to understand any of it, but I think this class for me will be the perfect key for me to understand finally, you know, finally understand what the hell Wittgenstein was talking about when he was talking about the language games. Nevertheless, this is just gonna be a video of me trying to get my crap together because, well, behind the scene, you know, nothing looks that pretty behind the scene. I mean, this room, for example, it was a bloody mess just five minutes ago. So I think this preparation video is gonna be interesting. Let's see what we can get out of this one. Like I said before, I don't know how I've ended myself in this situation, but yet here we are. And this is what I wanna do more of in the future. It's just me um, showing you guys the behind the scene of stuff. So it's not just a scripted video where I'm just talking about everything, talking about theories and concepts, but I feel like what happens behind the lens is a little more important, even though right now it's still on the lens. So this semester, which is semester one of 2022, is gonna be my last year of university. So if you followed along the journey, you should also know that I'm currently studying a double major in French and literature. And the weird thing about this course combination is um, the university that I'm at. Melbourne University actually wants you to take units outside of your direct discipline to actually like be a more well-rounded person. I think they're in a sense encouraging that entire renaissance ideal of like you can be well-rounded in many subject areas and still function as a as a scholar as an academic which I which I feel like it's it's a great idea it's a great idea if they figure out how to how to actually present this entire you know this this polymath learning in a more accessible fashion because it is a pain in the backside to decide what to study outside of your direct discipline sometimes there are prerequisites that you're not that you're not exactly meeting. Sometimes there are problems because, you know, I had a friend who decided to study, oh man, theoretical physics as a, as a breadth subject, which is the subject that you have to study outside of your discipline. He decided to study theoretical physics for his third year subject without having any, you know, without having any pre-existing knowledge of physics. And then he ended up failing his third year. So that's obviously what I don't want to do. And of course, level three sort of like, should I say breadth subjects are sort of like, hey, you're gonna come into this class with no pre-existing knowledge and you're gonna basically study with 30 year students that are actually in that major. So I went through a safer course and decided to study uh, a philosophy subject for uh, for my third, um, third year's what, breadth subject, which is the philosophy of language. And for me, that sort of combined very nicely with uh, the rest of my course, which I'm gonna talk about right now, and we're gonna get into the organizational part in a second. So I'm studying four units this semester specifically. First unit is my French unit, which is called French 5. There are different French levels, and French 5 is your B2, you know, edging on C1, basically like the fluency stage of French. And then you have, of course, the philosophy of language, which is the subject, uh, which is one of my breadth subjects, which is the subject outside of my direct discipline in literature and French, but it's still considered as, as an art subject. And then, of course, Gothic, fiction, which is, you know, um, I have mixed feelings about gothic fiction as a unit, but hey, if you have any pointers for me how to study gothic fiction, well, leave me a comment down below. Your favorite writers from the gothic tradition. My first classic ever was Frankenstein, and I loved it, but I was 16 at the time, so I didn't understand any of it. If you give me Frankenstein right now, and if you let me reread it, um, I'll probably reach some new conclusions, more cynical conclusions. 
to be honest. And last but not least, uh, as a part of my French major, um, I was required, or I am required, to study a unit called uh, this aspect of culture study, which is, in a sense, it's not enough just for you to study the language, you actually need to immerse yourself into the French culture, so to speak. So this is, in a sense, indoctrination at its finest. You don't just speak French, but you have to kind of be French at the end of this degree, which to me is kind of, it's kind of interesting. So last year's culture study was all about this European culture of literature as a, as a whole, uh, or literature in a broader context with politics. So it was basically kind of like half political theory and part uh, literary studies in, in French, entirely in French. And that unit basically rendered me half dead and half fluent in French. But this year, as a part of my culture studies, we literally have to read French novels. And a reading list, I kid you not, it's probably one of the most passive aggressive, should I say, reading lists I've ever come across. They basically gave me this big list of things that you could potentially read. And when I browsed through this little list, all of the books in there are basically, you know, the cornerstones of French literature. You have Jean-Paul Sartre, you have Victor Hugo, you have um, Diderot, you have the Duc de la Rochefoucauld, all these big names of French literature. And you're basically required to read them in the original. So I've decided to basically commit academic suicide and decided to read Alexandre Dumas, Le Trois Mousquetaires, the, the Three Musketeers for my first reading. But I have to basically slog through 800 pages of French in less than a month. You know, I read Ulysses for my unit last year for modernism and that took me about a month and a half. So this is gonna be a big challenge and I'm gonna document this challenge every step of the way. Second half of the semester, a little bit easier because it's more contemporary French literature. So I chose Camus' L'Etranger, The Stranger, in French. I've already read this in French a couple of times. And another one that I really enjoyed in French was uh, Camus' uh, La Peste, which is um, The Plague. That's something that I also happen to really, really enjoy um, in my spare time. But it's, a, it's another thing when you study it, when you have to study it for university. It sucks out of joy and passion out of it. So like I said, I don't know how I ended myself in this situation, but we have to deal with it head on. So here is a no malarkey guide to surviving a new semester. So currently I'm looking at my Notion page for uh, semester two of 2021, which is kind of like this very nicely grouped table for all of my notes and all of my lecture notes and all of the, all of the assignments uh, that I'm currently doing. And basically in Notion, you can have tags for your system, or you can have tags for your documents, for your notes and everything. And I like to separate all of my documents into four different categories. So here's basically a real time look into my chaotic, well, organized chaos. That is my Notion page. So here we have 2022 semester two. So I just wanna add a page right here and call it uh, 2022 semester sem one. And I basically want to use templates because I'm that lazy person who doesn't want to exactly use, well, my own, my own ways of doing things. And then relabel this as, well, semester one, 2022. And here's like a list of all the malarkey that I'm about to study. So of course, I'm not going to study Ishiguro or um, Baroque forms. You know, I don't know what the hell that is. So there are these tags over here that I can customize. So for the first French five class, I'm just going to simply call it Fren uh, 0008. So that's a really good way for me to figure out um, where this class is going to go. And then instead of study groups and instead of all of these, you know, arbitrary categories from this, from this template, I'm just going to add in uh, reading notes. I'm just going to create reading notes and I'm going to create uh, lecture notes too. Also, I'm going to create revision. And last but not least, uh, revision and there's research. So there are all of these separate categories. And of course, French 0008. I'm going to go ahead and delete whatever's in, in this template thing. So therefore, we have the four categories established on, on this Notion page, reading notes, lecture notes, revision, research, all color coded. And of course, we have the four subjects, French uh, 008, which is French uh, 5, which is you know French language, English 0013, which is Gothic fiction, philosophy 0053, that's philosophy of language and French 0010, which is um, the demonic subject of reading French novels. When that category is done, you're basically free to rename everything. For example, uh, lecture one, perspectives on language. And that's basically gonna go under lecture notes, and that's gonna go under philosophy, 
And that's gonna go in the lecture notes. And you can just basically type Wittgenstein was a nutcase. And he was kind of a nutcase. So you can play around with the system. And the last thing that I'm gonna introduce you guys to is this filter function that I that I find really, really useful. So there are all of these sub tags and sub notes, created material. You can even add your own little files over here. And then if you go to filter, and if you add a filter, you want to add a little filter where a name contains. And if you just want to choose class and select an option, French 0008. So what that's going to do with the filter function is that once you have a full page of notes, once you apply this filter on top of this document, it's going to show you the notes or the revision things from your, from your French unit. And if you create a view in this view function tab, it's basically going to retain your filter and if you rename this view of this filter and rename it as, for example, this is the ENG uh, view, you can rename it as philosophy0053. And what's gonna happen is that that's gonna create a view uh, exclusive for all of your notes that are sort of like grouped under this tag of philosophy0053 class. I mean, this is gonna make a lot more sense if we use this uh, page that's already kind of established. So whenever I go to view and whenever I go to filter, and if I add a filter, add a filter, for example, you know, class, and if I just want to see all of my notes from uh, all of these units, for example, English 20022, then that's only going to give me a view of all of the English classes or notes from all of my English classes. So that function is extremely useful. And over time, you can build yourself this this list however you want. Over time, you can basically build yourself an entire, you know, a very robust kind of um, study list, a very robust kind of uh, commonplace book for your subjects. So, hope you guys have enjoyed that chaotic sort of walkthrough of my university prep. And this is what I want to do more of in the future, how to get yourself organized, how to basically do university without losing your mind. And then again, R.C. Walden here, and I will see you in the next video. Take care.